Thank you, Emmanuel's group, for a beautiful song. I have a story for you. But before I tell you a story, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, great God, the God of love and mercy, the God of all creation, for bringing us here for a holy rendezvous with you. Everyone here came to hear from you. Open our ears and our hearts that we may hear your voice and feel your hand touching us. Thank you, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. A man I called David I lived in Rwanda 10 years ago. He loved singing the song. That's not the song he loved the singing, though. He sang the song, There Will Be No Night There. Every time. And so, our preacher was making home visits and heard him singing from work as he was moving around. And that song attracted the teacher that he wanted to hear him. He heard him, the other one, without noticing the presence of that teacher around him, he kept on singing. And then the preacher greeted him. He said, I love your song. And David said, thank you. And the preacher requested if he could visit him in his home there. And David said, you're welcome. The preacher asked, where's your home? He said, my home is here. He talked to them, David and his wife, and they agreed to attend church services the following Sabbath. And they also agreed that when, when the preacher calls for people to come to Jesus, they too will stand. Well, the Sabbath was there. <clears throat> they went, David and his wife, to church. And the preacher started preaching. The same man who talked to them that day when he visited them. At the conclusion of his sermon, he called people to give their lives to Jesus. David's wife stood up. But David did not stand up as he promised. The preacher insisted because he was focusing on David, expecting him to stand any time from now, from then. David did not stand. His wife, who was sitting close to him, reached out to his hand and said, Stand up. Why should you die in sins? And David said, I don't want to stand up. I left my beer home. I have to drink it. So I will come and repent next Sabbath. And his wife insisted, why do you want to die? He said, if I die, God will weep. And if he weeps, who can go and wipe away the tears of the Lord, of God? And the preacher saw that the man is decided. And that was the end of the services. So... David and wife walked home. On their way home, 
someone who was riding his bicycle came from a different, uh, from the opposite direction and full speed and he hit David, knocked him down and his head hit the stone, a big stone and David died right there. This story to me sounds a strange story. Isn't that a strange story? Let's look into two things. One, I don't know if I, I'm audible up there. Can you hear me? Can you hear me in the balcony? Oh, wonderful. David chose to drink beer fast and repent next Sabbath. His choice is the one thing we are going to look into. Another one is the wonderful statement that I never thought of saying, if I die, God will weep. And if God cries, if he cries, who can wipe away tears from God's eyes? Those two things, you're going to look into it. First, his choice. You see, David was, had accepted to repent when he first met the preacher. And the reason of meeting the preacher was the song he sang. One thing I didn't tell you is the preacher asked him a question. Is he a church member? He said, no. How did he learn the song? He said, oh, I hear the church members of Seventh-day Adventist uh, goers who sing this song, and they loved it. And I sing it. To me, that was the first invitation. He was invited to attend the church services and to become a member of the church. He postponed that. And God sent a preacher to pass by. David sang the song, inviting the preacher to his ho- I mean the, the, yeah, the preacher to his own home. And the preacher came, they discussed and agreed he was going to give his life to Jesus the next Sabbath. When the next Sabbath came, David postponed again. You can see a certain pattern in his thinking, in his dealing with the church services, with God. So it looks like if the, second, if the second Sabbath came, he could postpone for another Sabbath. Because it looks like it's a pattern. And why should he then choose beer? Why should beer take hold of him, take control of him, such a way that he creates a pattern? It's a question that I can answer by speculations, but I don't have the answer. Yet, it is still a question. One thing we can, we can, we can, we can, we can see clearly is he loved beer. And he knew anytime he can repent, he loved God too. Anytime he can repent, doesn't mean he rejected God, no. Matter of fact, as we can think through the question, if God cries, who can be able to wipe away his tears from his eyes? He showed that he is full aware that God loves him such a way that he won't let him die. But we haven't reached that point yet. 
He loved the beer. It reminds me of Judas Iscariot. He loved Jesus, but he loved the money too. He didn't give up on Jesus. He didn't choose money instead of Jesus. He knew he had Jesus, and Jesus is more powerful than anybody else. He can choose to get money, and no one will kill Jesus. Anytime he is with Jesus, he'll be faithful to him. So did the thing David. He chose to drink beer. Jesus, God is always there, but beer is not always there. He made it. He wants to drink it. Let him finish it. Then he go to God. God is always there. And God loves him. <clears throat> That's one point. Let's move from there to if I die, God will cry. And if he cries, who can wipe away tears from God's eyes? The first question we could ask ourselves, does God cry? The next question, sincerely, who can wipe tears from God's eyes? If God will wipe away tears from our eyes because he is able, he's our maker, he can do everything. Who is above God? Who can wipe his eyes, tears from his eyes when he cries? Let's go to the first question. Does God cry? What does Luke chapter 19 verse 41 tell us? Could someone read it for us, please? Luke chapter 19 verse 41. What does it tell us? If you have the verse, I can give you the microphone. You read it for me. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Thank you, Bob. Which city is this? And who wept? Who wept? Is Jesus a God? Oh, so God can, 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 can cry, can weep. Thank you. Why did he weep? Could you read 42? Oh, sorry. Okay, that's 42. Saying, if you had known, even you, especially in this, in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. If you had known, known what? If you had known what? What could bring, <coughs> excuse me, what could bring peace to you? If you had known what could bring peace to you, but now they are hidden from your eyes. <clears throat> the point is, does God cry? Yes, he cries. And why does God cry? Why does God cry? Jerusalem did not have peace. And our God is a God of peace. He wanted Jerusalem to have peace. Someone to read Luke chapter 13, verse 34. 13, verse 34. 
Someone to read Luke chapter 13. Thank you, Jason. Luke 13, 34. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather her children together, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. Thank you, Jason. Jesus complained over Jerusalem. Jerusalem. God sent prophets to warn him, to warn the people of Jerusalem so that they can repent from their sins. Jerusalem received them and killed them. He sent other people to preach them, including Stephen. He was stoned to death. And this chapter 13, meaning it came earlier than chapter 19. He was, they did not listen to what he said. If they had listened to the prophets, then they would have peace. If they had listened to the people sent to her to preach and be told the word of God, they could have had peace. Now the city was soon going to be destroyed by the Babylonians. And Jesus saw it in the near future. He could not stop it because that was their choice. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11 says, someone to get it, or put, I'm, I'm opening a bracket on Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11, maybe 12. It's a bracket I'm opening. I will come back to this point of Jerusalem. I'm talking about choice. If you have it, have the microphone. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, Ezekiel 33, verse 11. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? Therefore, God swears himself, says, as I live, I'm not happy when a sinner dies. Therefore, turn from your ways. Have peace and live. Why should you die? I love that question. Why should you die? It's a choice you make. God wants you to turn from the sins. But if you don't, you say, let me go and finish my beer, and then next Sabbath, I will repent. Then that's your choice. And God then doesn't leave you like that. He said, why should you die? Because surely you shall die because of your choice. Why should you die? Going back to Jerusalem. Jesus said, the Babylonians are coming to kill you. I warned you through the word of the prophet. Instead of listening, you kill them. I warned you through other people sent to you. Through a, and you stone them to death. Yet, in my love, in my wonderful love that you cannot describe, I'm not able to see a distraction and just cried. Yes, David was right. God cries. God cries. 
So who, who can wipe away the tears from the eyes of God? Before we go there, I want to think that there is no David among us. Because none of us drinks beer. Or oh, there's no inhabitants of Jerusalem among us. Because we have never killed any prophet. We have never stoned anyone. Let's go back to David. David had no chance to reevaluate his priorities. If he did, he was working with urgency of the matter. See, the preacher was not going to wait for him. He only had maximum of five minutes calling the people to repent. He had to decide quickly, and he did. I oh, will have to drink my beer, and the next Sabbath is there for me. I will repent. Leave me alone. You shall die, said the wife. You shall die in your sin. If I die, God will cry. But the crying of God will not save him. He will have died. And so he had no any other salvation. So now David among us is here because we still have time to reevaluate our priorities. We have learned from the behavior of the people of Jerusalem. We know God, God weeps over anybody's sin. Sin that kills not only beer. Sin that, is ki that, that kills not only stoning and killing the prophets, but also refusing to obey God or do anything against God's commandments can also kill. Now, none of us is in that category. We have accepted Jesus. We have accepted God. And that's why we are here. So the question is, how easy is it to accept God? Last Sabbath, the chief taught us about journey. How easy is it to be with God? Doesn't he weep? Because of us, of me, of anyone else, here is not a question of us, it's a question of me. David and his wife were supposed to be one, but they became two. His wife was saved and his husband died. So it's not a question of public opinion, it's a question of individual decision. Now that we have decided, how then can we see God, God's tears stopping? How can we see God's tears stopping? What makes God know to weep? In John chapter 15, verse 7, God, I mean, Jesus says, when one sinner repents, there is joy in heaven. The angels of God rejoice a lot. It's a banquet. So when they rejoice, it doesn't mean that God is weeping. He's rejoicing with them. Which means in this case that we can us wipe away the tears from God's eyes if 
we repent every moment of our sins. How is it? How easy is it then? We love God. We love Jesus. Oh, yeah. If we accept his salvation, that means we love Jesus. Is that all? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. The young Lula said, I kept all the commandments from childhood. So can we. And Jesus was happy. But that wasn't all. There was more to it. Jesus went ahead. He said, if you want to follow me, deny yourself. Leave your family. Leave your wife. Leave your husband. Leave your mother. Leave your father. Leave everyone who does not follow me. Deny yourself. Come and follow me. Leave your properties. Take me as your only properties. Oh. Oh. That is easy to knock us down. And you find, I find myself being a David. But when David chose the beer, he knew full well that the beer cannot save him. He knew salvation belongs to God. So it is with any property. No property can save me. No property can save anyone. We can't find peace in anything except in obeying God, except in choosing God. That's, all, that's the only hope we have. But there's another question. What if you are in your community and say, I've chosen God, I don't go uh, to take beer, I don't go to do this and that, as it's contradictory to the will of God. How will I survive all alone? And God says, Jesus says, Unless you, unless you deny yourself and take up your cross and carry it, you are not worthy of me. He is very clear. He is very clear. We need to simply have Jesus in view. When you get together with your friends, or with your relatives, with everyone who doesn't believe in Jesus, have Jesus in view. When they mock you, when they laugh at you, when they disown you, remember, it's better to be disowned by them than to be disowned by Jesus. That if you disown me, he says, if you deny me before people, I will deny you before the angels of God. Then there won't be any difference between me and David. Friends, it's a moment and a time of decision. To reevaluate our, our, our to reevaluate our priorities. And then <clears throat> that when you hear that voice say, Come ye to me, you blessed of my father. Enter the house, the kingdom of God that was prepared for you. And in that time, the song of David will be heard in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. God himself will wipe away their tears, their sorrows. And there will be no death. There will be no sorrow. There will be no pain. Why? The first things have passed away. What are they? The sins are gone. God will never weep. Nor will you weep. Once we don't sin against God, 
God is happy, doesn't weep. And it's you, it's me, it's you, faithful of the Lord, who will wipe away the tears from God's eyes if we do what he wants, regardless of either death or anything. Now, it's a commitment we are going to make. We are going to renew. We, we, we made it. Someone is telling me, yes, I've made the commitments. I want us to recommit ourselves anew from today on. Who is willing to go the way of Jesus, of God? Even more, I know you do. Even more, and wipe away the tears from the eyes of God. Please stand. May the Lord God of heaven bless you and help you to stand for him from now on and forevermore. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Now we are going to sing song number 100 and what? 81? 181. Probably we will we'll stand.
Shall we pray? Thank you, Father. Thank you, wonderful God, the God of all creation, for your message. Help us to commit, to recommit ourselves, our lives to thee. So that when our Lord Jesus appears, any time from now, we are all ready to have our, our tears wiped away from our eyes. Great God, dismiss us with your blessing. I bless every, everyone here and those ones who are not able to come. For this I beg in the name of Jesus. Amen.